Hey everyone, it's Rishi Agarwal, and today we're going to be talking about choosing the right chess CT protocol. And the five major protocols we're going to be talking about today are contrast enhanced chess CT, non contrast chess CT, HRCT, CT pulmonary angiography, and chest CT angiography. So I'm going to talk about each one of these, um, but we're going to start off with contrast enhanced and non contrast routine chest CT. Okay, I have two CTs here, and this is the same patient. It's a patient with sarcoid, and I just want to illustrate the difference between getting a study with contrast and doing it non-contrast. So if we first look at the mediastinum, you can see that there's a lymph node that's pretty well seen here on, contrast, on the contrast-enhanced study. And it's actually pretty well seen on the non-contrast study, too. Now, the difference is in the hyla. So you can see that there's soft tissue in this left hilum and in this right hilum here. But if we go to the non-con study, it just all looks like one contiguous blob. Okay, you can't really see the definition between the, uh, the lymph nodes and the vessels that you could see very easily with contrast. So if you're protocoling chest CTs or you're ordering chest CTs on a patient, a good rule of thumb is if you're imaging a patient for the first time and you don't know what to expect, it's probably better to give contrast so you could clearly see hilar lymphadenopathy if it's there. Okay, now if you have prior imaging on a patient and let's say you're just following up a lung nodule, well in that case it's okay to do it without contrast because you're not really concerned about the hyla, you're just mainly making sure that the lung nodules are stable. Um, on the other hand, if you're doing a follow-up study and you're following up a lymph node that's in the hilum, then it is better to do that study with contrast so you could see and measure the lymph node more accurately. So in general, you're going to be using non-contrast chest CT to look for lesions that are confined to the lung, like nodules, masses, uh, ground glass lesions, whereas you're going to be using contrast when you're worried about the soft tissues. So a patient with lung cancer, with lymphadenopathy, a patient with lymphoma or other mediastinal mass, and even some infections, like for example, if you're worried about an empyema, um, then contrast really helps to look at enhancement of the pleura. So general rule here is if you're worried about the soft tissues, give contrast. If you're just concerned about something in the lung, doing it non-contrast is probably okay. Okay, this is an HRCT. And the main reason you would do an HRCT is to look for and um, distinguish among different interstitial lung diseases like UIP or NSIP, chronic HP, all of those. Now, um, High resolution, the HR part of HRCT is really a bit of a misnomer because nowadays most places use routine chest CTs that are with really thin slices, um, like two millimeters or less. So the term HRCT harkens back to a time when slice thickness was maybe double or triple that. Um, but what's different is that the lung windows in an HRCT, if you're not doing this on routine CTs, are uh, reconstructed with a kernel that increases the sharpness of the image, um, although at a trade-off usually um, of increased noise. HRCT also includes a couple more extra sequences than a routine chest CT. So most places also acquire an expiratory series and a prone series. So this is the expiratory series and what you're looking for here is air trapping. So the lung should become uniformly wider as the ratio of lung tissue to air increases. Um, and areas that are sharply demarcated and remain dark on the expiratory usually represents air trapping. And you can see a little bit of air trapping here on this patient. Um, and then there's the prone series. So what the prone series is for is to ensure that what you're seeing on the supine series is real pathology and not just dependent atelectasis. So if you were looking at this uh, supine series, you might say, well, how do I know, maybe not on this case, but how do I know that some of this stuff is real fibrosis and it's not just dependent atelectasis? And that's what the prone series is for. So dependent atelectasis will go away on the prone series, whereas um, you know, if you're looking at real fibrosis, that's going to stay on the prone. This is a CT pulmonary angiogram, and some places call them PECTs because it's mainly done to look for pulmonary emboli. And the way you get these is the technologist will take one slice and put an, a region of interest on the pulmonary artery, 
and inject contrast. And once a predetermined threshold is reached, the scanner will start scanning. And uh, that will give you these images. So as opposed to a CT angiography in which the aorta is the brightest thing, here the pulmonary artery is going to be brighter. And the SVC in this case is even brighter than both of those because the, you have still have contrast streaming in from the injection. So obviously the main reason to do a PE study is to look for pulmonary emboli, um, but you can also do this kind of study to look for AVMs of the lung. And AVMs of the lung arise from the pulmonary arterial circulation, not from the bronchial artery. So that's why you want to do it this way. And um, so AVMs of the lung can be solitary or multiple. And if they're multiple, you have to think about something called HHT or hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias, in which you get AVMs in multiple organ systems. This is a CT angiogram of the chest, and usually these are done to look for aneurysms and dissections and intramural hematomas. So the first series that's actually done is a non-contrast CT of the chest. And the reason is with a non-contrast CT, it's a lot easier to see intramural hematomas in the aorta compared to after you give contrast. So the next thing that's done is the technologist takes a slice and puts a region of interest over the aorta. In this case, it's over the descending aorta here. And then the tech injects the contrast and um, watches the Hounsfield units of the aorta. So this is at 12, then it goes to 133 and 175. So at a predetermined threshold, the scan starts. And on the actual post-contrast images, the thing that's going to be the brightest is the systemic uh, vasculature, so the aorta is going to be the brightest thing in the image. So as I mentioned, chest CTA is usually done to look for pathology in the aorta, but it is also sometimes used for surgical planning, for example, prior to aortic valve replacement. And there's a whole subset of chest CTA that I don't really want to delve into because it requires its own video, and that's cardiac CT angiography. So cardiac CTAs are typically require something called ECG gating or cardiac gating, which means basically that the CT machine is syncing up the scan with an EKG tracing so that um, cardiac motion can be accounted for and removed from the images. And that's about it. If you have any questions about any of the topics I covered today, you can leave a comment below or you could direct message me on the About page of this YouTube channel.